In this video, I'm going to be showing you step by step how to install and use Elite Dangerous Odyssey Materials Helper. For brevity's sake, I will refer to the program as EDOMH from this point forward. EDOMH is a program that you can use to help you organize and keep track of your engineering for both ship modules and the on foot suits and weapons in Elite Dangerous Odyssey. I have been using this program for a long while now to help me manage my engineering and it's something that other commanders in the fatherhood have shown interest in but it's quite a complex program to get to grips with and so showing people how to use it can take a while. With more and more people becoming interested in using the program I thought it made more sense for me to produce this video and then everyone can see how to use the program here in this video. A few of the major Elite Dangerous content creators have already made videos introducing this program previously. I wanted to do a good job of showing what this program can actually do and show you guys how you can use it to really benefit your engineering gameplay. With this in mind, the first thing I did was go straight to the horse's mouth, so to speak and got in touch with Jixt, who is the creator of this program. I had a lengthy chat with him, and he was very happy that I had contacted him to discuss this video. Uh, he was already aware of the other videos that have been produced that highlight his program, but none of those content creators had approached him at all, so he had no involvement with those videos and felt that the videos failed to show many of the features within the program and also they didn't show people how to actually use the program. I spent a good amount of time with Jigst and he went through everything his program can do with me, most of which I had already been using but there were a few things I didn't know or wasn't sure of which he cleared up for me. This is what I am now going to be going through with you guys today. I will be showing you how to install the program, highlighting all of the current features and showing you clearly how to use them all. Jixt is also very active in the development of his program. He has his own Discord server, which I will link in the description, where he provides technical support, discusses current and upcoming features and where you can suggest ideas for addition to the program. which, as you can see here, he is very willing to implement. He's a great guy, very easy to talk to, and he's produced what I feel is the best third-party program to help with your in-game engineering. Okay, let's get on with the tutorial. So, first of all, you will need to download and install the program. You can download the program from GitHub under Jix Repositories. I will put a link to this page in the video description. What you are looking for is the latest release from over here. So you click on this link which takes you to the release page. Here you can see the current release version and what's new in this release. The link you are looking to download is below in this assets section. But you have a few links here. The first is a DEB file which is an installer for Linux systems. If you are running Microsoft Windows, then the second link is an MSI file, which stands for Microsoft Installer. If you want the download to install the program for you, then choose one of these two links, depending on what operating system you are using. The next two options are portable versions for both Linux and Windows. Only use these links if you are wanting to extract and install the program manually yourself. If you don't know how to do that, then you use one of the first two links. The last two links are just two versions of the source code and are only useful for other developers to look at the actual code used to create the program. When you try to download the file, you could receive a warning that it may not be safe if you have something like Microsoft Smart Screen turned on. You may also receive a similar warning when trying to install the file that you download if you are using an antivirus that has its security settings turned up very high. 
This is just because the program does not have an official security certificate confirming that it is safe to use. Jixt would have to pay around £100 annually to have the program certified as safe. And as he does this for free as a personal project and makes no money from it, I can certainly understand him not wanting to spend that money just for someone like me to run the program and confirm that it is safe. Anyone who knows me will tell you that I'm a huge IT geek. I've been working in IT all my life to a pretty high level in a well-known huge IT corporation on contracts for the UK Ministry of Defence, Lloyds Bank and the Department for Work and Pensions. So I am very aware of any security issues. I keep my computers extremely safe. I use a good antivirus and I monitor all internet traffic going in and out of my PC and across my home network. I don't use smart screen though, nor do I have my antivirus set incredibly high on security. Because both of these are unnecessary if you are knowledgeable and take reasonable precautions. When I downloaded and installed this program, I had no such notifications the installation went smoothly and there has been no unauthorised internet access to or from the program since. I do understand that not everyone has that knowledge or experience to know what downloads are okay though. And many of you may be using smart screen or have your antivirus security turned up to max. So you may well receive those notifications. All I can say is I have used this program for many months now and have had no security issues. I'm happy to use it, and I see no reason for anyone else to have any concern over using it either. Having said that, it is your decision, and if you are still concerned, then by all means heed the warnings, but if you are happy with my recommendation, then you will need to bypass those warnings and allow the download and installation of the program. This I can't help you with, as there are too many possible variants of browser security programs and antivirus programs, which all work differently. You will need to look up for yourself how to allow the download or installation in each particular case. Installation is really straightforward. Once you open the installer, you just click Next. You then have the option to change the default installation location of the program if you want that. But that's about it. The program then installs pretty quickly. Once the install is completed, you should then have a shortcut to launch the program in your start menu. On launch, you will see this Pac-Man window whenever there is new information that the program needs to download. Once the download is completed, it will go through a quick installation of the new information and then that window will disappear and a new window will open showing what's new in this version and the privacy policy. Once you have read those, click continue and that window will also close and in a moment the main program will open. This is the program's main window and once you have this then the program has been successfully installed and is running correctly. The first thing I'd like to do in the program is go through all the settings with you. So if you click on the settings tab in the sidebar here, we can get started. Here you can set your language. As you can see, mine is set to English, but there are a few languages to choose from. You can also set your text size here. As you can see, mine is currently set to normal. I usually have the text size set smaller, but I have increased it to make it easier to read for this video. You can also see your journal folder here, which should have populated automatically for you, but you can also click the select directory button to choose a specific directory should you need to. Next is a polling mode option. This is only for specific use cases. For example, if you have your journal on a network share. Then you have the option to register or unregister the program's permission to handle EDOMH links. These are links used to specifically redirect URLs to this program. If the program does not have this permission registered to handle these links, then those links will not work 
and you won't be returned to EDO and AH automatically. So I would recommend registering this. Next, you have some Odyssey material settings and Horizons wishlist settings. I will show you what these do when I get to the relevant section of the video. Then you have the notification settings. Here you can choose to enable or disable notifications from EDOMH, either globally or on a case-by-case -case basis. You can also adjust the notification sound volume and click this play button to test it. This list of notifications below allows you to enable or disable them all separately, as well as select a specific sound file to use for each type of notification should you want to. As you start using the program, you will soon see what each of the notifications are, and then you can decide which ones you want to keep and which ones you want to disable. I will mention a few of them that are really cool though. The ones that begin with point two, we have point two relevant material, point two wishless material, and point two irrelevant material. How these work is in game, when you're going through the on foot settlements and trying to find your, your materials in the lockers and things like that, the goods and assets, then you can just point to one of those materials when you open a locker and it will give you a notification. So it'll tell you whether it's relevant, irrelevant, and if it's on your wish list. She's fantastic. Below these, you have Frontier API integration. This is where you can link your Frontier account, which I highly recommend. This connection is what retrieves your data from your Frontier account and allows the program to monitor your stock levels, etc. Without linking your account, you are going to miss out on the majority of the benefit that this program can bring. If you choose not to link your account, then a good amount of the things I am about to show you will not work. So you need to be aware of that. Next, you have the options for the augmented reality feature settings, which I will also discuss when we get to the relevant section of the video. And finally, you have an opt out for tracking. The program by default will track what materials are picked up and where they are picked up, though they are not recorded as being picked up by you directly. The tracking is then used to show the most popular locations for collecting all the materials. You can disable this tracking here, but then you won't be contributing to a really useful addition. Again, I will go further into this option when I get to the relevant section. You also have this status bar throughout the program, which on the left side shows the journal that is being watched, whether the journal is an Odyssey or Horizons journal, and the last API update time. On the right, it shows the current commander and your current location in game. Yes, you can have more than one commander monitored and switch between them here if you have alt accounts. If you click on the Horizons tab in the sidebar, you switch to the Horizon section. This section is all related to engineering of the ship modules. As you can see, this section is split into two windows, a smaller left side and a larger right side window. There is also a vertical sidebar on the left of the right side window, which also has multiple tabs. If you look at the left side window, you have multiple collapsible menus here. By default, you will be on the bottom menu item, which is the information about the program. There are many menu items above that though, starting with engineer unlocks at the top. As you click on each menu, it expands, revealing information and submenus. I will explain these in more depth shortly. If you look at the larger right side window, you have four tabs, materials, commodities, wish list, and engineers. There is also this arrow icon at the top here. You can click this to collapse the left side menu window altogether for when you are not using it. And you can click it again to open it back out if needed. 
The materials section shows information on all the materials that are collected for ship module engineering. The levels and numbers beneath each material are your current stock in the green section and remaining space in the red section. If you hover your mouse pointer over a material then you get a pop-up showing information including the material type and which blueprint recipes that material is used in. The materials are displayed in their appropriate classes and have icons to show their grade from 1 to 5. You can also search for a specific material at the top here. The commodities section works pretty much the same way as the materials section but is for commodities. All of the commodities are listed here and the numbers beneath each commodity show your stock both in your ship and on your fleet carrier if you have one. Again you get a pop up whilst hovering over commodities but this time you get the commodity type, whether it is rare or not and it will show you if the commodity is used for an engineer unlock. In this section you can also search at the top here. You also have additional options to sort and filter the list. The list is sorted alphabetically by default but you can also sort by ship quantity, fleet carrier quantity or total quantity. You can also filter the list to show just the items that you have stock of, just the items you have stock of on your ship, or just the items you have stock of on your fleet carrier. Now I'm going to skip to the bottom of these tabs to the engineers. Here you have all the ship module engineers listed. If you click on an engineer's name, the left side menu will also open to that engineer's information page under the engineer unlocked menu. Back in the right side window you can also clearly see which engineers you have yet to unlock and for each of them you can see your progress to unlocking them. For the ones you have unlocked you can see what grade you have them unlocked to and your progress to unlocking the next grade by this meter here. Beneath that information you can see the engineer's location which if you click on the location it will be copied to your clipboard. Below that you have all the blueprint recipes that each engineer provides and what grade they do them up to. If you haven't unlocked that engineer yet then you will also have any unlock prerequisites and your progress in unlocking them. If you click on any of the blueprint recipes then the left side menu opens to the information page for that blueprint. The wishlist tab is the main star of the show here as this is where you will add any wishlists of your required engineering. As you can see in this drop down menu I have already got a couple of wishlists in here with some engineer unlocks I still need to do and some guardian stuff I still want to unlock. When you first launch the program though, you will just have a default wishlist that is empty. You can use this options button to create and manage your wishlist. If you click the button you get a drop down menu and you have the options to copy wishlist to clipboard. This copies a link to the clipboard that you can share with other EDOMH users so that they can see your wishlist. Create wishlist pretty obvious this option it creates a new wishlist. Delete wishlist again obvious click this and it's bye bye wishlist. Export wishlist this option lets you export the entire wishlist in the form of a text file containing a list of all the materials what you have available and what is required and what you still need. Rename wishlist again obvious this option lets you rename the current wishlist. The create on Etsy button here is for a cool new feature that I will be demonstrating later on in this video. To show how this all works I'm going to go through how you would use this system to manage your engineer unlocks and track engineering a ship. So let's create an example. 
a wish list for your engineer unlocks. I first create a wish list and give it an appropriate name. Now you have your wish list which is empty. You need to add blueprints for your engineer unlocks. Here you can make use of the left side menus. If I open the engineer unlocks menu and open the drop down sub menu, then you can see the engineers that I have already unlocked are in green in this list and the unlocked ones are in white. So let's select one that I haven't unlocked yet. Well, I know I want to unlock Laurie Jameson. In the information page here, it shows me the unlock prerequisites and any material or commodity requirements. Any unlock that requires a material or commodity donation will also have this add to wishlist drop down sub menu here. When I open this sub menu up, you can see it lists your existing wish lists, including the engineer unlock one that I just created. If I click on that list in the sub menu, then you can see that requirement is then added to my engineer unlock wish list on the right side main window and the left side menu now shows that I already have one of these blueprints in that wish list. Now you can see how that works. I will quickly add a few other engineer unlocks to the engineer unlocks wish list. Now in the right side main window, you can see I have a few unlocks listed and their titles are colored differently. It shows you in this legend here what the colors mean. White text means that the blueprint cannot be crafted yet. Yellow means it could be crafted if you can manage to trade for the commodities. And green means you have the materials or commodities to craft the blueprint already. You also have a couple of icons at the left and right of each blueprint name. You can click on this left eye icon to hide or show that unlocks requirements from the wish list. You can click on the right side X icon to remove that unlock from this wish list altogether. You can also click on each unlocks title to go to that unlocks information page in the left side menu window. Below the list of unlocks here, you can choose to hide or show materials or commodity requirements that you have already completed. So if I uncheck this, you can see that I already have all the sensor fragments needed to unlock Chloe Sadisi. Also, if you hover your mouse pointer over an unlock in the list, then only the associated requirements for that unlock are shown with the other requirements being grayed out until you move your mouse pointer. Now that you can see how that works, let's move on to how you would use it to engineer a ship's modules. Let's say I want to fully engineer a ship. Let's say a crate mark two. I again create a wish list and give it an appropriate name. Now you have your wish list, which is empty. You need to add blueprints for engineering. Here you again make use of the left side menus. I'll start with hard points and work my way down the menus. In this first drop down menu, you select the hard point weapon type. Let's go for plasma accelerators. On the information page here, you can see a quick description of the engineering blueprint that you currently have selected, which you select from this second drop down menu select long range. Below the description you see a list of the materials needed to engineer this module blueprint at the grade that you have selected here. You want to engineer them up to grade 5 so you should click on that. Notice below though you are only seeing the requirements for the grade 5 not the lower grades as well. Now you want to add this module engineering blueprint to your wish list for the crate. So you click on this add to wish list drop down menu and you have two options for each of your existing wish lists in this menu. The first option is to add the currently selected grade to the wish list 
and the second is to add all grades to the wish list. Well, seeing as you want to engineer this module from scratch, you need to add all grades. So go ahead and add all grades to your create wish list. In the right side main window, you can now see that the blueprint has been added to the list and it includes the requirements for all five grades. But wait a minute, how does it know how many rolls you will need per grade? This is where the option in settings comes in. Here under Horizons wish list, you can set how many rolls you want to allow for when collecting your engineering materials. You just increase or decrease the values to what you prefer. This is what I have it set to though, and I find these work out well for me. So now you know where it gets the number of rolls from, but what if you want to make a change for a specific blueprint? Well, you can click this drop down arrow on the blueprint and adjust the values for this specific blueprint in here. Now I want to also add an experimental effect for my plasma accelerator. You can do this by clicking here, it switches you to the menu for the experimental effects for the weapon that you were looking at. In the second sub menu here, you can choose your experimental effect. Let's go with plasma slug. Again, you see a description and the requirements. And again, you can add this blueprint to your wish list in the same way as you did the weapon blueprint. Now you can see you also have the experimental effect blueprint in your create wish list. I want to have three of these weapons on my crate though. So to do that, I have to add them twice more, both the weapon blueprint and the experimental effect. As you can see, you can switch between the module blueprints and the experimental effects blueprints via this button. Now I have three of each blueprint in the wish list and can move on to adding my next module. Let's go with beam lasers. Again with long range. And I want two of those. For the experimental effect, let's go with thermal vent. And again, I need two of those. Now I have all of my weapon engineering blueprints in the wish list. Hopefully now you can see how this is working and I could continue to add each module engineering blueprint this way for all of the remaining modules. As you can see in this left side menu, all of the modules and their blueprints are here to be added. You even have the blueprints for synthesis if you want to have a wish list to keep an eye on your synthesis material levels. Very handy for those of us that use synthesis on a regular basis. And you have the tech broker blueprints if you want to have wish lists for any of those. There really isn't any engineering that you can't keep track of here. Now to save time and to demonstrate a cool new feature, I'm not going to carry on adding any more module blueprints to the create wish list. Instead, I'm going to use the new feature to export a create mark II build from Etsy. If you remember this create on Etsy button that I mentioned earlier, well, this is where it comes in. When you click this button, it will open Etsy in your default web browser. Here you can create a ship build which I'm going to assume you already know how to do. So if you don't, you're going to have to find another video on how to use Etsy. Once you have created your ship build, you can save and store it here on the Etsy website. Here are the builds that I have already stored here. For this video, we are going to be looking at this Create Mark II build. Here you can see my Create build all the modules and the engineering that I have chosen. Once you have your build finished on Etsy, you can now export it directly back into EDOMH 
as an engineering blueprint wish list, which is completely awesome. How you do this is click on this options or OPS drop down menu button here and you see the options to import, export or search EDDB. You want the export option. In this dialog box there is now a new button to export to EDOMH at the very bottom. There is a couple of notes on this though. First you must have at least one module that you are applying engineering to in your build in order for the export to EDOMH button to appear and pre-engineered modules do not count. You have to have a module that you are actually applying engineering to. Secondly, the roles per grade settings that you may have set on Etsy are not exported into EDOMH. The settings for roles per grade in the EDOMH settings are used instead. Once you click this export to EDOMH button, you will be returned to EDOMH automatically. If you have EDOMH registered to handle EDOMH links in the settings. Otherwise, you will have to switch back to EDOMH yourself. Back in EDOMH, you will now have a new wish list named the same as your build on Etsy or named ED Shipyard Imported if you hadn't named your build on Etsy. In this wish list you can see you now have all your module engineering blueprints already added. How awesome is that? Now you can see exactly what materials I am missing to complete the ship build and because EDLMH is monitoring my journal the amounts that I need are updated almost instantly when I collect new materials in game. So, when I'm collecting the engineering materials to engineer my builds, I have EDOMH open on a second monitor and can instantly see what materials I still need. Below the required materials list, you can see you also have a shortest travel path section. This gives you a list of the required engineer visits needed to engineer all your modules in the best order to visit them for the shortest travel distance. This is worked out from your current location in game. Once you have all the required materials, you can set off on your journey to these engineers and remove each of the completed blueprints from the wish list as you have them completed. One other thing I wanted to show is that you can make use of the pinned blueprints and the remote workshop. How you go about doing that is in this right side window here, you've got all the engineers that you're going to visit what you do is just click on one of the blueprints like this one for long range beam lasers under brew tarpon and then on this left side you get the details page for that blueprint what you have to do is find brew tarquin in this page double click on her name and it'll get this pinned icon next to it at the same time over here You'll see that Brew Tarquin's gone from the list now, but we have the long range beam lenses listed under Remote Workshop. You can do this for all of the pin blueprints that you use. So, for example, let's go with Jenna Fortune, and again, double click on a name. That also gets added to the Remote Workshop. Let's go for Lee Chung. The shield generator. Again, that gets pinned and goes to the remote workshop. And let's go to Palin. Double click that and that goes to the workshop as well. So by using these pin blueprints and the remote workshop, you can cut down on how many engineers you need to visit. And that's how you can use EDL MH to help you sort your ship engineering. Now we're going to take a look at the Odyssey section of the program. If you click on the Odyssey tab in the left sidebar here, you switch to the Odyssey section. This section is all related to engineering of the on-foot suits and FPS weapons. The layout should be looking fairly familiar to you, as it is pretty similar to the Horizon section. You have the left side window with the menus and the right side main window with a vertical sidebar on the left of the right side main window. 
With this vertical sidebar though, you have some different tabs. First, you have materials. The materials section shows information on all the materials that can be collected on foot, though not all of them are actually used in the engineering. You also have some totals at the top here for the three different types of materials, goods, assets and data. These show the totals for your materials in your ship and in your backpack. Below the totals you have the materials list. This is a good time to mention the option in settings here that allows you to switch the reading direction for the materials list in the Odyssey section. You can see here I have it on horizontal and as you can see here the materials are listed alphabetically but they flow horizontally left to right before they move down to the next row. If I change the option in settings to vertical you can now see that the material list is still listed alphabetically but they flow in a vertical column down the left side before going into the second column on the right. This is the way that I normally have it. The materials with blue coloured titles are the ones that are considered irrelevant as they have no use for engineering. The materials with white titles are used either in engineering blueprints or engineer unlocks. This no entry icon here indicates a material that is prohibited in some systems. I think this is a good point to mention the other options for Odyssey materials in the settings. This solo mode setting is so that you can choose to mark unneeded engineer unlock materials as irrelevant. If you are playing the game just for yourself, then you may want to do this, but if you are playing in a squadron, then you might want to still collect them to trade with your squadron members. I still collect them to share with others, so I leave this unchecked. This next option, Override Materials, allows you to add materials that are currently considered irrelevant to a list of materials that you want to now be considered relevant. This could be useful if, say, Frontier decides to suddenly make one of the materials now useful for new engineering. In that case, you can then add that material to the list here, and it would no longer be considered irrelevant in EDOMH. Back in the Odyssey Materials section, the numbers next to each material are your current total stock, and when you hover your mouse pointer over a material, these numbers pop up with appropriate icons. These numbers show you where your stock is stored. So how many of your stock is on your fleet carrier, your ship and in your backpack. Also, when you hover your mouse pointer over a material, you get a pop-up showing information, including the bar to sell price, which blueprint recipes that material is used in, the economies where it can be found, and the best locations to find that material. When it comes to these lists of the best places, you have three different lists. These are the lists that are provided from the tracking I mentioned at the beginning of this video in the settings section. If you chose not to take part in the tracking in the settings, you won't be contributing to these lists. So if you can, please don't opt out, as these lists are extremely useful. The first list is Best Average Collected Per Visit, and this is a top 5 list of locations that provided commanders with the best average amount over multiple visits for that material. The second list is Most Collected in a Single Visit, which is a top 5 list of locations that gave commanders the most amount of this material in any one single visit. The third list is most collected in locations and this list is the top five list of locations where commanders have collected that material the most. This is the list that I find most useful and is the one I generally tend to pay attention to. You can also search for a specific material at the top here and you have a few sorting options. Alphabetical is the default, 
and all materials are sorted alphabetically regardless of their category. Engineer unlocking blueprint irrelevant is all materials sorted in that order. So you get the engineer unlocking materials, then the engineering blueprint materials, then the irrelevant materials, but they are also separated by category. So assets, goods, chemicals, tech, data are all listed together. Relevant slash irrelevant, pretty obvious this one. It lists all the materials with the relevant ones separate from the irrelevant ones. Again, though, they are also separated by category. Quantity, again, this is pretty obvious. This lists all the materials with the ones you have the most of first. Again, they are also separated by category. You can also apply filters here and you have quite a few options to choose from. All is the default and shows everything. All with stock limits the list to just those materials that you have a stock of. All engineer unlocking and blueprint limits the list to just engineer unlock and blueprint materials. Only required engineer unlocking and blueprint. This is similar to the previous filter, but now only shows materials for any engineer unlock that you still need and materials for any blueprints that are still in your wish lists. All engineer unlocking is all the materials used in engineer unlocks. Only required engineer unlocking is just the engineer unlock materials that you still need. Blueprint is all the blueprint materials. Irrelevant is all the irrelevant materials. Irrelevant with stock is all the irrelevant materials that you currently have a stock of. Backpack is the materials currently in your backpack. Fleet carrier is the materials you have on your fleet carrier. Prohibited is just the prohibited materials. You also have a favorites filter here. You can add a material to your favorites by simply clicking on its title in the default listing. Then if you filter by favorites, you only see the materials that you have marked as favorites. Now we'll move on to the engineers section. The engineers section works the same way as the engineers section in Horizons but it's for the on-foot engineers and on-foot engineering. So I won't waste time going over it all again here. If you haven't seen it, you should go back and check the engineers section in the horizons part of this video to see how this all works. Now I'll move on to the trade section. In the trade section, you just find a blank page, a notice that says not connected and a connect button. This section is for creating and using an online trading service that Jixt provides. You do need to manually connect to the service first, hence the connect button. You will also be disconnected when you restart the program. When we click the connect button, click connect. We have these options here for creating a trade offer. Let's create one. What can we offer? Offer one air quality report and what do we want for it? Say a power regulator. And so we create that trade offer. Here we can see it here. We're offering this an air quality report. That's what we're giving. And then we're looking to receive a power regulator. You can see we just got an, an offer in. So let's accept that. Once you accept the offer, you can then chat to the commander doing the trade with you. Oh look, it's Jixt. <laughs> Let's see where he wants to meet. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so I'm off now to Felicity's base to go and meet Jix. So now we're completing the trade. Now the trade's done. And there we go. Trade completed. Close the chat window. The offer's still there, but it's, it's finished with now. So we just click remove offer. And that is how you do a trade. Unfortunately, this trading system hasn't taken off and is very underused at the moment. Also, the few trades you do see are often for silly trades, such as 50 manufacturing instructions for five opinion polls. Maybe that could change though if enough commanders start using this program. Now we'll move on to the bartender section, uh, which is a new addition. And in this section, you get to emulate what you could trade at the bartender. This section basically enables you to see what you could trade at the bartender before you actually go there, which is incredibly useful. Here you see a list of all the materials you can trade at the bartender. To the left of them is their buy trade value and to their right is your current stock of them. For those of you who may not know how bartender trading works, each material is given a trade buy value and a trade sell value, with your sell value being lower than what you pay to buy the same material. So for example, if you select a material such as chemical catalyst, which has a buy value of seven, then you get this list of possible materials that you could trade. With the sell trade value to the left of the list, and your current stock to the right of the list. You can click the plus next to a material that you wish to trade, such as epinephrine, to increase the amount you are offering to trade. You can see if I offer three of this material in trade, I will receive one of the chemical catalyst in exchange, but I am wasting two points of trade value by doing so. This is because epinephrine is worth a sell value of three. So three times three gives you a total sell value of nine. The chemical catalyst costs seven trade points to buy, leaving two trade points that you would have wasted on this trade. No, unfortunately, you don't get any change from your trades. If I reduce the amount of epinephrine to one, but also add one chemical super base, then I still get one chemical catalyst, but I am only wasting one point of trade value. This is because chemical super base is worth five trade points to sell. So five plus three gives you eight total trade points for selling. And as chemical catalysts cost seven trade points to buy, you are now only wasting one trade point on this trade. Ideally though, you don't want to waste any trade amount value but this is not always possible with what you may have available to trade at hand. In this case here though, if I say add a two pH neutralizer to the trade offer, which is worth a trade value of three to sell per unit, then that adds a further six to my total trade value, bringing it up to a total trade value of 14 which will now get me two chemical catalyst in return and I won't waste any trade amount value by making this trade. Once you are done seeing what you could trade for this material, just hit this reset button to go back to the main list where you can check out another possible trade if you want to. Now we move on to the loadout editor. In the loadout editor, you add your on foot loadouts and edit them to how you want to engineer them. There are a couple of ways you can do this. You can add a whole loadout at once, or you can have a loadout for individual items. So for example, if you create a new loadout here by clicking the options button and selecting create loadout, 
we'll name it Maverick Loadout. You now have this empty loadout where you can add a suit and or weapons. Let's add a Maverick suit to this loadout by clicking the Add Suit button and selecting Maverick Suit. Now you can see you have the Maverick suit added to the loadout. You have a link to delete the suit from the loadout if you wish and the artwork for the suit. Then you have your current grade which you can also change here. So let's say you have a Maverick suit that is already at grade 3. Then you set the target grade which I would assume you want to upgrade this suit to grade 5. Below this you have the modification slots which are currently empty. If you click on the first slot you can choose one of the suit mods to go into this slot in your suit. Let's choose quieter footsteps. You can also do the same for the other three slots which I'll quickly fill here. Now you have all those slots filled you can see the stats for this suit below. You have the current stats, target grade stats and the final stats once all the mods are applied. You can also switch this option at the top of the stats so that the stats will then only show the stats that are changed by the engineering. At the bottom of the stats list you have this add to wishlist drop down menu where you can choose to add this loadout to a wishlist but we're not going to do that just yet. For this loadout I want to add some weapons to the loadout as well as the suit. So you can click on this add weapon button and add a couple of weapons, a primary weapon and a secondary weapon. And you're also going to set these as grade 3 currently and fill in which mods you want in the slots. Now what if your Maverick suit came with a mod already? Let's say it already had quite a footstep when you bought it. Well, you can simply double click on that modification slot to mark it as already applied. The slot then turns yellow to identify it as a mod that has already been applied. You can do the same with the weapon modification slots too. Let's say that your Tormentor also came with magazine size already applied. There you go. Now you have the suit, weapons and all the modifications in the loadout you want to add the engineering blueprints required to upgrade to this loadout into a wishlist. If you go to the bottom of the suit listing here and click on the add to wishlist button, you can see that you don't have a wishlist set up for this loadout, so you need to select create wishlist. This will automatically create a wishlist for you with the same name as your loadout and add the suit blueprints requirements to it. The wish lists in this Odyssey section work identically to how they do in the Horizon section. They are just for the on foot engineering blueprints instead of ship engineering blueprints. So I won't be going over how they work again in this section. If you haven't seen it, you should go back and check out the wish list section in the Horizons part of this video to see how this all works. Also, the left side menu window works the same way as in the Horizon section, but again it shows the on-foot engineer unlocks and on-foot engineering blueprints instead of the ship ones. And again, if you haven't seen it, you should go back and check out that section in the Horizons part of this video to see how the left side menu window works. One thing I will discuss here though is the augmented reality feature settings that were mentioned in the settings section of this video. Here in the settings section you can see the augmented reality options. As you can see from the description this feature is only available on Windows 64-bit PCs and it will only work if you run your game in boardless and windowed modes. You may also need to install the Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable if you haven't got it already. I know I certainly had it already installed. As you can see here I have this feature turned on which it is not by default so if you want to use this feature you will need to enable it here. What the feature does is provide an overlay that appears in game when you open a data port at settlements in Odyssey. In the list of data materials in the data port the overlay will outline and colour each material in the listing in either blue for materials that are used in blueprints 
but that are not in your wish list, lime green for materials that are in your wish list, or red for materials that are irrelevant. You can see here that you can also change the colors used if you want to. Now, if we go back to the wish list, that augmented reality overlay feature is incredibly helpful for quickly seeing which of these data materials you need to collect when you open data ports and saves you a lot of time having to manually check through all your data materials in your wish list every time you open a data port. Next, you will want to add the weapon blueprints from the loadout to the same wish list as your suit blueprints. To do this, you switch back to the loadout editor and repeat the procedure for both of the weapons, except this time you already have the wish list created. So now you can just select the Maverick loadout wish list to add the weapon blueprints to. I know this part is currently a bit of back and forth between the sections, but I have made a suggestion to Jix that would make it less hassle and hopefully he can implement that fairly soon. Once you have done this for both of the weapons as well, you have your complete wish list for this loadout to be engineered. As you can see, this is already quite a large list of materials to collect. And this is only one suit and two weapons being engineered that are already starting off at grade three. So if you are wanting to engineer all the suits and multiple weapons, then take note. You need to be prepared for a great deal of material collecting. One other cool thing I want to show you that you can do in the loadout editor is in combination with this option here, clone loadout. What this option does is create a clone of the currently selected loadout that you have open in the loadout editor. What is cool is you also have this special loadout here called current loadout read only. If you select this loadout whilst you are playing the game, then it brings up the exact loadout that you are actually using in-game. As the loadout title suggests, you can't edit this loadout, but you can clone the loadout, like so. Now you have this new loadout, this is an exact copy of what your current loadout is in-game, and you can rename this loadout if you want to, and you can add any further engineering you want to make to it, and then create your engineering wish list the same way as I showed you previously from this loadout. This is just a neat little way that Jixt has recently added to help you quickly create the exact loadout you are using in game within the loadout editor without having to add the suit, weapons and modifications manually yourself. I think it's a really cool addition. Okay, I think that is all for this tutorial. I think I've covered everything. If you have any further questions or suggestions regarding EDOMH, then please do check out Jix's Discord server linked in the description, where he provides excellent support and where you can also offer suggestions to improve the program yourself. I have to say, I think Jix has done a really great job with this program. It's incredibly useful already and continues to improve steadily as he is always adding new features and updates on a regular basis. When Jix makes any major updates to the program in future, he's also going to go through those new features and changes with me, and then I will be making new videos outlining the new features and changes for you guys. So watch out for those highlighting more new features in the future. As always, if this video was helpful or you enjoyed it, then please do leave a like as it helps this video be seen by more people. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, then consider subscribing, hit the notification bell to get a notification whenever I post a new video. Thank you for watching and see you out in the black. 07 Commanders.